66,000 square kilometers in extent, this island just off the southern tip of India, its splendid and pristine beaches, washed by the warming tropical waters of the Indian Ocean, has often been referred to as the Pearl of the Orient by the travelers of old. The Greeks of Ptolemaic period knew this land as Taprobani, and the Arabs of North Africa conducted brisk and fertile trade in pearls and spices and referred to the place as Serendip in their writings. Roman and Chinese coins used in ancient times in the early common era have been found in excavations conducted within the precincts of the first capital city at Anuradhapura, giving evidence of the contact and converse the people and the nation's royalty had enjoyed with those other renowned civilizations and cultures. Colombo has emerged in the last 200 years or so as the principal port and commercial capital. Today, it shimmers as a hub of modern commerce with a plethora of shopping opportunities and sites to delight along with attractive dining options. Perhaps the most attractive are the friendly people. Ours is an island culture and typically tropical. The feelings are generally warm and bring all people religions and even languages within its embrace with the least hint of prejudice. Another reason the early travelers and merchants were acquainted with this island was its considerable treasure in semi-precious and precious gems. Hence another name by which it was previously known Ratnadipa or Island of Gems. This trade continues even today and with the best in modern technology and facilities attendant to ensure originality, superlative craftsmanship and honorable conduct of business. A well-organized tourism industry in the capital, Colombo, as well as in a vast array of locations in different parts of the country, ranging from coastal resorts to places in the mountains and in special places that offer breathtaking views of paradisal vistas, amazing natural colors and combinations. Within the Colombo area, the excellent hotels cater to all manner of requirements as suit the modern traveler. Business people, especially, revel in the attention to details that support their need of pursuing commerce as well as relaxation. One of the more recent developments at the high end of luxury are several boutique hotels. Such splendid facilities are truly sumptuous in their layout and in their willingness to indulge the visitor his every wish. Getting about is easy in Sri Lanka given its size, the varied climate which ranges from sizzling beachfront holidays to restful temperate hill country climbs are within reach in a few hours by road or rail and for some it will be but a few minutes ride by helicopter or seaplane services which are also commonly available. The beaches of the southern seaboard are always a favored destination of sun of all seekers. sorts. Some of them, such as in places like Benthota, provide a scintillating extra of an experience with water sports. Speaking of which, this suggests the possibility there is of tackling the foaming challenge of the white waters. There are organized excursions in season and many do enjoy the sheer thrill and daring associated with this adventure sport. In fact, Sri Lanka now offers a host of such fun pastimes in the realm of adventure sports conducted under the strict supervision of qualified professionals in harmony with internationally applicable safety regulations.
leisurely treks and walks under the verdant forest cover suggest other tropical pleasures that are hard to match. Perhaps even nights spent outdoors under the stars. In China, many were the famous travelers of old who passed through, not least Marco Polo and the North African sailor Ibn Battuta. Among his recorded impressions is his startling personal discovery of the sacred mountain with its unmistakable sharp shape high above the surrounding mountain range. When Ibn Battuta climbed the rock, it was known to many of his contemporaries as the place where the footprint of Adam was to be seen. He also acknowledges that while many Muslims held that view, there were others of the people of the land who venerated the same footprint as that of the Buddha. Another example of the fusion of cultures that happens with ease in this multifaceted island. The seasonal climbs during the dry winter months of December to March. <laughs> The definite temperate climate that prevails in the central hill country of Sri Lanka drew the attention of British colonials of the 19th century and today still offers a wonderful holiday experience. Lovers of golf are also drawn to the first-rate 18-hole golf course at Norelia. The modern verity, which is Norelia, boasts of excellent accommodation and superlative scenic attractions in the breathtaking views among the mountain ranges. Among the world-famous Ceylon teas, the product that comes from this region is ranked as among the finest in the world, recognized for its distinctive color, aroma, flavor, and bouquet. Thousands of hectares of tea bushes and the factories for the exact and precise processes which bring tea in your cup greet the eye as you travel about the mountain roads. Waterfalls within this tea country are truly worth a second look. The southern city of Gaul whole special attraction for it was an ancient port which later became a bastion of European presence in Sri Lanka marked first by the Portuguese in the 16th century later the Dutch and the same was true after the British administration reached island-wide in the 19th century the Dutch built fort city of Gaul is now a highly favored destination for travelers especially those from Europe this, too, is a World Heritage Site, which has benefited greatly from the largesse of the present-day Kingdom of the Netherlands. The restoration and preservation of the artifacts and locations of historic significance continues in the foreseeable future. This is the most beautiful country of its size, were words written by Marco Polo. He certainly knew what of he spoke. A first-hand encounter is the best way to learn more of the special allure that defines the resplendent isle. One can have fun in the sun and frolic in the waters, diving and boating, up in the balloon or under the jungle canopy. 
study history, archaeology, ancient hydraulic systems, and the winning ways of people. Play games. And immerse yourself in... largest animal that's ever roamed the planet. It's immense. It's, it's just unfathomable, I think. It's built so perfectly, so streamlined. It's as if the ocean parts to make way for a living submarine. We're just metres away from the biggest creature that's ever roam the planet. 30 metres long, weighing 140 tonnes. Pretty huge, huh? I mean, they're all bloody massive. It's really hard to imagine that an animal that large can exist at our doorstep, and we know so little about it. We're on a scientific expedition to a kingdom of rare blue whales, located off the coast of Sri Lanka. get as close as anyone ever has to these timid giants. Here he goes. Oh, look at that fluke. That's yeah. nice. That's really nice. But no one expected this. Look how close. Oh my god, it's coming up. Almost all blue whales travel vast distances in search of food, from the warm waters of the equator to the North and South Poles. But in Sri Lanka, a tropical island about the size of Tasmania, the blue whales are different. They don't seem to migrate at all, and as yet, no one knows why. Blue whales in other parts of the world migrate vast distances, but the ones out here seem to hang around all year round, so it's, it's pretty unusual. Our guide is marine biologist Asher DeVos from the University of Western Australia. Asher was born in Sri Lanka and leads the first major study of these unique blue whales. This is the least known population of blue whales in the world. But until now, it hasn't been safe to research these whales, has it? No, we've just come out of a 30-year civil war, and during that time, we didn't have access to these whales. We couldn't go out to sea. But now we've got the opportunity, and it's a time for us to really try to understand these populations. Now this wild ocean has been reopened, and Asha's scientific study is beginning. But for a long time, she thought this day would never come. This is a, a part of the world where women aren't in the forefront of things. And I think that was one of my biggest challenges, you know, convincing people that I could do it. Even though I'm not a man, I don't need to be a man to do what I do. I want to know more. I want to know more about the largest animal that's ever roamed the planet. We don't know anything about it, and it's hard for me to understand how these huge creatures can be just there, and we know next to nothing. Oh, well, well, well. So, is that a blue? Yeah, it's a blue. There's a blue right out there. We're 20 kilometers off the southern tip of Sri Lanka. There she is, just there. There he is, there he is. Whoa. As we get closer, the blue whale hears the engine and dives. Our quest will not be easy. They're incredibly elusive. What, what's their personality? They're really shy and very timid. One minute you see them and then that's it. That's it, they're gone. So we've got one shot, one chance. Pretty much. Um, and we have to just keep scouring the ocean all the time to make sure we don't miss out. There it's it is. Long again. Perfect. This whale doesn't get spooked. It's immense. It's, it's just unfathomable, I think. Beneath the surface, you get a true sense of the whale's immense size. Covered with remora fish, some almost a metre long. 
We kind of think its heart is the size of a small car. We think a child could crawl through its arteries. The tail from tip to tip would be about three meters. It's so huge, but when it moves, so gentle and, and, and absolutely graceful when, it, when it's about to dive and it lifts its tail out of the water and just slithers gently into the water. Not, there's no huge splash. There's, you know, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just so smooth and clean. Blue whales were a prime target for hunters last century. No other whale delivered as much oil and meat. Hundreds of thousands were killed. In the last 50 years, their numbers have hardly increased. Only 10,000 are left, which is why they remain endangered. Okay. Right there. Asher photographs skin markings and tails which are called flukes. They're a whale's fingerprints. Her photo album is the first whale census here. She's also marking the exact location of every whale we see. We can paint some kind of picture of what might be happening underwater. And above water, there's danger in all directions. Asher's whales are right in the middle of one of the busiest shipping lanes on Earth. Her research is looking at whether a slight change of course for the ships might reduce collisions with whales. But the biggest potential threat to whales from peace is a new and unregulated whale watching industry. Here in the port of Marissa, there are 15 boats chasing blue whales. Next year, it's predicted there'll be 100. There are small time operators through their ignorance, they might be too close to well. Chitral Jayatalaki is a naturalist with Sri Lanka's biggest tourism company. He wants new laws to protect the whales. We know that the world is going to come to look at Sri Lanka as a fantastic location to do whale watching. And as more operators and boats get into sea, the more the need that these guidelines and discipline is uh, formalized. My dream is one day, if Sri Lanka is known as the land of the blue whale, Ash's blue whale sightings are plotted over a map of the ocean and a pattern is emerging. The blue whales are concentrated over the deepest underwater canyons. This dark, dark, dark patch is where the canyon is and you can see our sightings are pretty much spot on on top of the canyon. So obviously the canyon, there's processes going on in the canyon that are encouraging the whales to hang around there you know, making it more productive, giving them more food. The biggest living creature eats one of the smallest. Krill, tiny shrimp, about the size of a 10 cent piece. They need as much as four tons a day. Wow, look at that. That's so close. This is amazing. This is an amazing experience. It's almost like, I feel like I've almost never seen a whale before. I'm, I get that excited. Oh, ah, it's just phenomenal, I don't know. But there is an unpleasant side to Ash's research. I wouldn't even describe it as fishy. It's kind of, yeah, it's not pleasant. This is blue whale poo. And yes, it's orange. So what scientifically can we learn from this? One thing is when you see it, you know immediately that this is a feeding area. And then on top of that, you know, you can find out what species they're feeding on, what kind of krill. There are other whales here as well. These are sperm whales. They're far more sociable and even hang around long enough for me to get in the water for a closer look. But it's blue whales we're here to see. And out of the blue comes our closest encounter. Look how close he is. This whale is four times the size of our boat. Oh my God, he's gonna come straight for the boat and it accidentally hits us. Oh. I actually thought, as the whale came up, it lifted the boat up out of the water. For a moment there, I thought that we were going to topple over. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it wasn't an aggressive move on the whale's part. We were switched off. We were just sitting in the ocean. I think 
we took it by surprise because we were so stealthy at that point. So good encounters happen to those who wait. <laughs> Every encounter means I learn something new. You know, every time I go out, every time I sit there, every time I follow a whale, I'm learning something new about their behavior. Oh, it's coming up, it's coming up. My hands are shaking, guys. My heart is racing. I can't even And I have seen hundreds of these whales. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ooh, butterflies in the stomach. It's crazy. Every single sighting is phenomenal and every single time I remind myself just how mind-blowing lucky I am to be able to go out and sit with the largest animal on the planet. I mean, who wouldn't smile, right?